Welcome to church. Just a few announcements for St. Andrew's Caro and Hope Alvinston. Fun script orders uh, are in, and so most can be picked up today. Uh, they came in uh, later this week. I guess they were held up with Thanksgiving. Youth groups. Uh, we did not get to go to the corn maze as a joint youth group between the two churches because of the tornado watches and warnings and the downpour of rain on Friday. So we're going to try and do that next Friday, the 30th of October. Uh, members, contact me for details. Uh, Hope Youth Group will again meet at Thursday at 6 p.m. online. And the next meeting for St. Andrew's Carroll will be uh, Monday, November 2nd, just after the Monday after our trip to the corn maze. I am on vacation this week, so I'm just helping out here with the online service. But uh, Brian Aiken will be speaking today, October 25th, and then next week it's going to be uh, Marie McNally. Carol Pies uh, orders, this is the last day you can order pies for $12 each, apple pies from the Carol Church. Uh, so if you want to get those orders in, you need to get them in today. Hope drive through Turkey Supper is happening on Wednesday, November 7th, or sorry, Wednesday, November 4th. Cost is $18 per meal. The last day to buy tickets is tomorrow. Today and tomorrow are the last days to buy advanced tickets. Contact me or someone else if you would like tickets ASAP. Um, ministry and personnel need to meet with me. We've tentatively set it for about 8.15 on November 4th after the drive through Turkey Supper. Um, but I will be confirming that with the members of the committee. Uh, Operation Christmas Child shoeboxes need to be in by November 8th. They've been sent home to the Sunday School kids at St. Andrew's Caro. Also, if anyone from Hope, please get uh, a chance to fill those out. I know we were hoping to touch base with some of the Friendship Club people who like to fill those out. Also, official board meetings are going to happen on Monday, November 16th for St. Andrew's Caro and Wednesday, November 18th for Hope United in Alvinston. White gift service, we are going to collect for Christmas for everyone as usual, and the food is not so much the issue, but gifts to have in time to be sterilized and given out uh, for Christmas for everyone in time. We've had to move up our day to November 22nd for our white gift service. So if you'd like to make donations to Christmas for everyone, you need to do that on November uh, 22nd. Um, I believe that's all the announcements at this time, so let us prepare to worship God today. Let us open our service in prayer, and this is a prayer written uh, by uh, Brian Aiken. Dear God, help us to know your love, peace, and hope through the Holy Spirit you provide within us. Help us to know you better every day and the grace that you instill in our lives. We come before you today and seek your guidance and direction for the road ahead. We pray, we sense your presence today, and every day, 
and ask that you would allow your Holy Spirit to guide our steps as we travel this road and the challenges that are evident along the way. We sense your wonderful blessings in the quiet and peaceful times, and we sense our opportunity to grow in our faith during the challenging times, such as the times we are currently in. We pray that we listen to you, you and seize this opportunity to learn and grow on our journey. We pray all of this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Our scripture reading today is uh, taken from Numbers uh, chapter 14, 1 to 12. The people refused to obey the Lord. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices. They wept out loud. The Israelites spoke against Moses and Aaron. The whole community said to them, we wish we, wish we had died in Egypt or even in this desert. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land? We're going to be killed by swords. Our enemies will capture our wives and children. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? They chose, They said to one another, we should choose another leader. We should go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell with their faces to the ground. They did it in front of the whole community of Israel gathered there. Joshua, the son of Nun, tore his clothes. So did Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Joseph and Caleb were, or Joshua and Caleb were two of the men who had checked out the land. They spoke to the whole community of Israel. Israel, they said, we passed through the land and it checked it, and checked it out. It's very good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he'll lead us into that land. It's a land that has plenty of milk and honey. He'll give it to us and don't refuse to obey him. And don't be afraid of the people of the land. We will swallow them up. The Lord is with us so nothing can save them. Don't be afraid of them. 
But all the people talked about killing Joshua and Caleb by throwing stones at them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting. All the Israelites saw it. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people not respect me? How long will they refuse to believe in me? They refuse even though I have done many signs. I have done many signs among them, so I will strike them down with a plague. I will destroy them, but I will make you into a greater and stronger nation than they are. Our second lesson is taken from Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill can't be hidden. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. churches and also at home. Uh, it's certainly a, a blessing to be able to do so and an honor. Our um, The message title today is Our Journey and it's based around um, the Old Testament scripture from Numbers 14 uh, verses 1 to 12 and the New Testament scripture Matthew 5 verses 14 to 16. The uh, This uh, seemed uh, appropriate to to delve into the uh, journey of the Israelites as we are also on our journey uh, during this uh, this pandemic. And uh, it's provided some very uh, challenging times and different times for all of us. Um, I'll start out by saying we, we finished up our bean harvest on October 18th 
and uh, this year's uh, yields have been good and uh, very thankful for that and I'm sure all farmers would uh, agree that it's been a, a pretty good year in terms of weather in terms of, uh, of yield and uh, harvest uh, has gone well so it's uh, it's great to be wrapped up the beans and then on to the corn next at some point so we've had uh, a challenging last uh, seven eight months uh, now and uh, it's it's put us on a on a different road than we would have ever anticipated being on and uh, even um, in the in the early days and still today as we go to get groceries as we uh, pick up parts and supplies for things uh, as we even do our banking things are, are different as we uh, typically use more online uh, things uh, when we do go out uh, we have to take special precautions with social distancing and uh, and masks etc to to stay safe and, and it's a goal of all of us to to try to stay safe during this this uh, pandemic and they started uh, over the last uh, th two three months to open up restaurants and facilities and that started to give us more hope that things may return to more normal normal but we now know that uh, the numbers have gone up again so we're in a second wave possibly of this uh, uh, virus so our road ahead has uh, started to change again and our journey has started to change again this uh, has had impact to uh, individuals as people face more isolation uh, from others that they wouldn't have anticipated um, there's less opportunity to see uh, extended families and friends even neighbors sometimes on a uh, and and this has uh, created some uh, some issues of isolation of, uh, of mental health uh, that uh, we are keenly aware of and um, I know even uh, myself I have felt some of the effects of uh, you know just don't see as many people as we used to and uh, when you do go out it's not as much uh, social uh, as it used to be so it's um, it had some uh, impacts it's also had an impact to the churches as we uh, as many churches uh, are facing different modes of delivery some still have uh, closed doors uh, some are open and uh, and doing things like this having some opportunity for uh, sharing in other ways so it's impacted uh, church givings it's impacted outreach because it's very difficult to do the social events uh, impossible to do the social events we used to do uh, now uh, and we also keenly miss the uh, fellowship of believers as we come together uh, we're not all together anymore typically um, and when we are things are different so prayerfully though it hasn't had an impact uh, on our faith our road ahead seems full of of unprecedented challenges now I'm sure the Spanish flu pandemic uh, uh, way back had some similar challenges but in our lifetimes this is very unique and very different so let's look at another journey today let's look at the uh, Israelites exodus out of Egypt and uh, the challenges of their road in Exodus 14 uh, the Israelites witnessed the miracle of the crossing of the Red Sea and their enemy being crushed behind them they followed that with singing and dancing and rejoicing and what a boost to their faith it must have been can you imagine what it would have been like to have crossed a sea on, on dry ground and and to have witnessed that and how evident God would have been to those people at that time and it it would be an amazing time of rejoicing and faith building so they were on the road then to the promised land and they were filled with joy but right away right away the Israelites started to grumble about their journey in the desert sure they complained about the lack of water and they said and they said this many times why has God brought us into the desert to die common theme in their grumbling God directs Moses to throw a piece of wood into bitter water which made it sweet and drinkable so uh, assuming maybe it was salt water that when he threw the wood in it became uh, drinkable water after that in the desert Elam God provides them with 12 wonderful springs of water to drink from in the desert sin 
they, they complained about the lack of food. Some of their supplies were running out. And that's when God provided the morning manna and in the evening quail. And God told them, don't keep the food overnight. And some tried and the food spoiled. But he told them on the sixth day, collect twice as much so that you could rest on, and eat on the seventh day. And the food didn't spoil when they kept it overnight to eat on that seventh day. Moving along on the journey at the Rephidim camp, again it was water and Moses struck a rock with his staff to provide water to the Israelites. The people were constantly complaining, why did you bring us here to die? We have thirst, we have hunger, why did you bring us out here to die? But God did provide. So this angered God and Moses was constantly pleading with God on behalf of the Israelites. And he would often say this, what would the Egyptians think if you, if the people perished and you brought them into the, the desert and they perished? And so he would uh, reason with God, which is interesting in itself. Also at Rephidim was the first battle with the Amalekites and Joshua led that battle. And this is where Moses held up his staff over his head and uh, God helped the Israelites defeat the Amalekites. Aaron and Hur had to hold up Moses' arms when he got so tired he couldn't hold the staff because if it started to fall, they would start to lose the battle. So God was with them. Going on to the desert at Sinai, God came in a cloud so that the people would hear his voice. And this was done to help put the people's trust in Moses as their leader. Could we imagine if we audibly heard the voice of God and, and that should have been enough to restore their faith when they heard the voice of God themselves. And to me, this brings back the imagery of the movie, The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston and Ewell Brenner. And, and I know I've seen it a few times and I'm sure many of you have as well. And, uh, and that scene from the, from the movie. And at Sinai, that's where God wrote the, the Ten Commandments or, or gave his people the Ten Commandments and then wrote them on stone tablets. And those commandments, as scripture tells us, was, was written by the finger of God. But when Moses was up on the mountain, Aaron made the golden calf because the people were grumbling and he wanted to appease the people. And the people started to worship this golden calf. Well, this, of course, made God very angry again. And again, he wanted to destroy the people. God called Moses to go down the mountain. And he was very angry when he got there. Moses was angry as well. And he threw the tablets and he broke the original stone tablets into many pieces. So Moses, though, interceded again in prayer to God. But this time there were more consequences. Many people died by the sword of each other. And a plague also destroyed many people at that time. There were so many challenges on their journey. So now let's go to today's scripture in Numbers. After the report back from Moses' exploration team in Canaan, only Joshua and Caleb believed they could inhabit the Promised Land. This caused the people to rebel and go back and want to go back to Egypt once again. They wanted to go back because they, they felt we got to the, the goal of our journey and we can't get there anyway. They were very um, angry about that. So again, God wants to strike them down for not having faith that they would get, get to the promised land. And again, Moses had to reason with God not to destroy them. This uh, again had consequences though, again. Uh, their lack of faith, God told them that not one of you, not one of you will see the promised land except for Joshua and Caleb, the ones that brought back the, the uh, and believed that, that they could get to the promised land. God told them that they and their children would wander in the desert for an additional 40 years. Very serious consequences indeed for the people's lack of faith. And the people repented after all of that and, uh, and again asked for forgiveness from God and moved ahead. So what is, what does all of this mean? Well, 
we are on a journey as well. And what is our road? For one point, there are several points in the, in the, in the journey of the Israelites that we could make. But um, as we look at their journey, God does not give them a straight path. If they had left the Red Sea and went right to the Promised Land, it wouldn't have taken them in the number of years that it did, particularly the 40 years that they were left in the desert. God didn't give them a straight path to the Promised Land. He allowed them to make choices. And we too are allowed to make choices. Some will be good choices. Some will be contrary to God's will, and we typically know it when we make those kind of choices. So we too, like the Israelites, have choices to make, and there are times when we, we fail and we do things contrary to God's will. And we too need to ask for forgiveness, and we too have an intercessor through Jesus Christ our Lord. We too need to humble ourselves before God ask forgiveness, and get back on the journey that he has prepared for us. Ultimately, if we maintain our faith and we can also persevere and we can reach our destination of our heavenly home, our eternal peace, our eternal life. So we're on this journey and we're on this journey together and we're on this journey individually as well as we, as it's our faith is between us and God alone. We have others to help us along the way, but ultimately our faith is uh, our relationship between us and our Lord. So COVID is going to be with us for a while, and it's a part of our journey. It is, a, is it a purpose of God? Will we draw closer to God because of it? And I I don't know if it's God's purpose, God's allowing it to happen, and uh, preferably we do draw closer to God in these times as we realize that we are not in control. It's God that's in control of this world. And the Israelites had to also realize that they were not in control of their journey. It's God that was in control of their journey. So we are on this road, and we are on this journey. In our New Testament uh, scripture reading from Matthew 5, we are to let light, God's light shine in the world. And this, this time is uh, not a time to hide it away, as scripture tells us, do not hide away that light, but let it shine, and let it shine even though it seems more difficult to let it shine today. It seems like, in, in some senses, is. Uh, we kind of step back and look at things that God is calling us to to reimagine his church of today because things are different and, and they will be different for quite some time and as we look to the future uh, there's there's going to be things that uh, stick around from COVID for a long time in how we how we go about our uh, our business how we go about our lives and indeed how we go about our worship and our and our faith so that is, uh, is something that, uh, this is something to ponder and think about as to how God might want us to, to uh, change the church of the future. How do we reach the lost in this new world? How do we serve God in our communities in, and in the, in the world during these challenging times? There are still ways that we can do that. So how do we let God's light shine to others during this challenging time? And I'm sitting here this morning, and uh, it's, uh, it's about 6 a.m. Um, during the daytime in our house, the phone seems to ring, ring quite frequently, and so uh, my office is in the, in the living room here. So, so I decided to, uh, when I woke up, just to get up and, and uh, record this, uh, this message. And um, uh, I think that it's a, it's a wonderful, peaceful time also to, to meditate on God's Word and to uh, seek His wisdom and His guidance. One thing we know for certain, just like the Israelites lost their way several times on their journey, they drifted off the road and started to look at the wrong things around them. And then they repented and turned back to God. 
the one thing we know is that if we do the same, that God will forgive us and bring us gently back onto the road that he has prepared for us and set us on our journey once again. Now I recall uh, a song from United Church Camp at Camp Menace Tongue. And uh, the leader there was, uh, her, her nickname was Spoonie, but her, her name was Barb. And um, uh, we got to know her quite well. But the song uh, was called One Steps Forward and Two Steps Back. Uh, one Step Forward and Two Steps Back. So basically, it's uh, keep moving forward. Sometimes we'll take a step back. Or I guess I had that wrong. It's two steps forward and one step back, so that we're actually making progress. Two steps forward and one step back. So we will take steps back occasionally, but if we keep taking those steps forward, we will uh, ultimately be moving towards God and towards the promised land that he has prepared for each of us. God will never leave us or abandon us as we move forward on our journey. Let us pray. Dear God, we're so thankful for the path that you have prepared for us. And Lord, we do recognize that sometimes we step off that path, we step backwards. And yet, Lord, if we turn to you, if we seek your forgiveness, you will forgive us and set us on our journey once again. During these challenging times, Lord, we just ask that you help us find our way through that you give us wisdom and you give us peace during these times and that we know that you are there to help us on our journey just as you were to help the Israelites fulfill their journey. Lord God, you are um, our hope, our rock, and our foundation. Help us, Lord, to stay on our journey with you. Help us to seek your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We uh, typically sing a song after the message, and so uh, uh, recording this as well, in, in case people would like to hear this at home. Uh, this song seemed to fit with uh, the message of our journey today, as it's uh, talking about the Lord taking our hand and leading us on our journey. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, and I'm worn. Through the storm.
precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. gather into your presence seeking your help. And as we listen to the news, we hear about the increasing number of cases across the province of COVID-19. Even in our own county, the numbers have gone up. Now they are starting to re reduce again and get back into only a few cases. But Lord, I pray that you would guide us through this time. Give us individually wisdom on how to navigate this time and not get angry and bitter about what we can't do but focus on what we can do and to do it as creatively as possible. God, we pray that you not only be with us as individuals, but with our government leaders, federally, provincially, and municipally, as they navigate this virus and all the other responsibilities they have to deal with. We continue to pray for our schools, that they would be safe and effective places to learn. I know from talking to some of the students, they're finding that school isn't as bad as they thought it was going to be. Help all of us to have the creativity and resourcefulness needed to adapt to these challenging times. God bless and protect our students in elementary, secondary, and even post-secondary education. We also pray for those who are having celebrations, whether it's birthdays or anniversaries. May they creatively figure out ways to celebrate. And we pray for those who are stressed out by these challenging and trying times. Give them peace and strength, we pray. Meanwhile, God, we continue to pray for our two churches of St. Andrew's, Caro, and Hope. We continue to ask that you would bless our Sunday school work, Caro's at home, Hope's as we're hoping to have some young people uh, start coming back again. We continue to pray for the kids' club and how there's going, the Halloween uh, handout is being mailed out this week, and God bless it. And may those children and young people find encouragement through the activities and the mailings they get. We also pray for the youth groups. And while we weren't able to join together on Friday in person as we had hoped, uh, with masks, physically distanced at the corn maze, uh, we continue to pray that you'd bless our online meetings. And hopefully we can meet next Friday uh, in a safe manner. We also continue to pray, God, for those who are dealing with health problems. Again, we've had a list of people we've named week after week who are dealing with cancer. You know who they are, God, and you know their unique situations. We pray that you'd be with them. Frank, Blossom, Lisa, Nancy, and I know there's a couple of others that are quiet. We also pray for a member of our Hope Congregation, uh, Mavis, who is recovering from a fall um, and is staying at her, and is staying uh, uh, and recovering, just bless her, help her uh, bones to heal. We also pray for uh, uh, people who are in hospital, uh, those who are unable to be at home because it's a lot more isolating. God, I also pray for uh, and continue to pray for my son Ryan. The doctor's appointment again on Tuesday was very encouraging as all of his blood numbers are stable and rising for the most part. But Lord, as we continue to deal with the danger of graft-versus-host disease and infections, just bless and protect him and help him to regain his strength from exercising and walking as well. Lord, we also pray for a number of people who lost loved ones. And in our church service at Hope, we mentioned a number of people locally who passed away. God, you know those people and help each one of them who can't have normal funeral services to have handed their loved ones over into your merciful and eternal care. Meanwhile, God, 
you know that each of us carry burdens in our individual hearts as we go along this journey that Brian was talking about. So Lord, as we in the silence moment, silent time, time of silent prayer, lift you our concerns, hear and answer according to your will, power, and might. Lord, hear our silent prayers. We thank you, God, for hearing, for answering, and for leading us through our journey. Continue to be with us, we ask in Jesus' strong name. Help us to recognize your help and your how you are training us and teaching us. As we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us so long ago, and we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.